Hey everybody, thanks for being a part of our services this weekend. Um, I wanted to basically start a new series and it's, it's basically called, called Soldier On. And I don't know if that's the great title or not, but I just thought about it from the standpoint of, you know, everybody at some point in their life is gonna be tempted to quit something. And it's probably something we have no business quitting. And I think it's important for us to just, you know, keep going and and soldier on, you know? And um, I wanted to talk today just for a few minutes about the why. And I think every single one of us are programmed to want to know the answer to the question why. And I think the reason for that is, I think that's the way God made us. And I think sometimes we ask the question why and we feel guilty about it. I don't think we need to feel guilty about it. I think that's what we do, that's who we are, that's what we crave. God made us that way. Um, the reason for that is because it helps us to figure things out, connect the dots, you know, attach some kind of a purpose to something. Um, but I think there's something else when it comes to the why that is incredibly powerful. Um, because the why many times in your life becomes motivation to not quit. And the more powerful your why, the more likely you're not going to quit. Um, I remember years ago, I went, I took the kids to a hockey game, and I've told you this before, but took the kids to the hockey game, and we decided to leave like a minute early before the game ended. And, and they were all just little, and it was just me and the guys, and we're all, I got Michael in my arms, and we're heading down the stairs, and we're trying to get to the exit. And I get down to the bottom of the stairs, and I notice I have three sons and not four. William was missing. And so I started to panic a little bit, to be honest with you. I didn't see my kid. And so I started to scream and yell at the top of my lungs, William, I was screaming his name. And at that time, the game ended and everybody was rushing for the exits. And so here I am screaming at the top of my lungs. You know, why would anybody scream at the top of the lungs in the middle of a crowd? Because they have a really, really powerful why. That's why, you know, my why was my kid and he wasn't with me and I was freaking out. And so um, all I know is my why was so powerful that I didn't care about it, what anybody else thought about me. I didn't care that they thought I was weird because I was screaming. I didn't, I didn't care about what the security guard thought or felt after I started yelling at him saying, stop talking to the girl and help me find my kid. I literally was screaming it at the top of my lungs. And I didn't, I didn't care about any of that. And the reason for that was because my why was extremely strong. My why was really powerful. I wanted to tell you this, your why or your purpose as to why you're on this planet is so huge and so powerful. And one of the reasons it's so huge and so powerful and so precious is because your why or your purpose comes directly from God. He's the one that made you and he's the one that gave you the purpose that you have. You know, um, we kind of get an idea of it. Look, I understand that everybody, you know, has certain gifts and talents and abilities and um, God uses those for you to accomplish the purpose that he has for your life. I understand that. But really, when you boil it all down, we pretty much all have the same purpose. And you get a glimpse of it in Isaiah chapter 43, verses one through seven. In the first six verses of the chapter, God's basically saying this to Israel. He's saying things like, look, I ransomed you. I bought you. You know, I called you by name. In other words, you belong to me. You're mine. Um, I'm gonna be with you. He says, when you go through deep waters, you're not gonna drown. When you're in the fire, you're not gonna get burned. I'm gonna protect you. He says, I've given you, you know, Egypt as, as your ransom. And then he, he ends, I think in verse number six, he basically says, and I love you. I love you. I love those three words, amazing words, powerful words. Uh, and then I love verse seven because he basically points to the purpose of Israel and really the purpose of, of, of every single one of us. The Bible says in verse seven, it says, bring all who claim me as their God. He says, I'm gonna round up all of, it, of all the Jews. And I'm gonna bring them back to Israel. And he says, bring all who claim me as their God. And then he says this, for I have made them for my glory. I've made them for my glory. And then he says, and I love this, this is like an exclamation point. He says, it was I who created them. 
And so basically that's God's way of saying, since I'm the one that created you, I'm the one that gets to choose your purpose. And the purpose that I choose for your life is that you bring me glory. That's what I want with your life. Your life, you have your life, you have your breath. You're able to see the sunrise come up today because I want you to take today and I want you to give me glory. And, and, and obviously he's the one that gets all the glory. And when it comes to glory, that means maybe, you know, kind of in our vernacular or our thinking, give me the credit. I want the credit for things that are done. Why? Because I'm the one doing them. I'm the one that made you. You would even be here if it wasn't for me. You know, but the actual word also means three other words. It means to praise, honor, and worship. Praise, honor, and worship. So the Bible says that my purpose in life is to praise him, honor him, and worship him with my life. You know, that's, that's what I do. And honestly, I, hon I honestly think that's one of the reasons why anytime somebody praises you or glorifies you, you know, or worships you, and maybe not to that degree, but anytime that happens, it's just weird. It feels weird. Like for, for example, when you're being honored, you know, it's kind of like fingernails on a chalkboard when somebody's saying, and he is so wonderful and he's this and he's that. You're like, okay, got it. <laughs> you know, why is that weird? It's weird because you weren't made to receive it. You were made to give it. Literally, that's what it is. And, you know, uh, the Bible talks about the fact that our, uh, in the Old Testament especially, we were made to glorify God. But it also says stuff in the New Testament. For example, God through Paul to us in 1 Corinthians 10, 31, he says, whether, you, whether therefore you eat or drink or whatsoever you do, you do all for the glory of God. And so the Bible in the New Testament through Paul basically says every single aspect of our lives, whether it's big, small, whatever it may be, um, in some way, shape or form, big or small, it's, it's uh, honor, praise, and worship. Honor, praise, and worship with every single aspect of my life. And to be honest with you, that's a huge calling. And it's worth not quitting. It's worth not quitting just for, for a couple reasons about God. Number one, because of who God is. He's God, for goodness sake. He made you. He created literally everything. He has all power. Uh, there's nothing that's too hard for him. He's the God of the universe. You know, he has all knowledge, all power. He's everywhere. You know, he's all of these things. Good night. Give him some praise, you know, honoring and worship uh, because of who he is. And the second reason, because of what he's done. You know, how would you feel if somebody came alongside of you and donated a, an organ for you or gave you life in some way? You'd be like, I'm so grateful to you. Thank you. Well, I mean, God gave his son who really was himself, who died on a cross, and we know rose again on the third day, but he did it all for us so that our sins could be paid for. You know what I say? Glory. I say, praise you, God. I say, I honor you, God. I worship you, God, for who you are and what you've done for me. And I, and I kind of get it. I, my eyes are opening to this purpose that I have, this why that I have in my life that is so huge and so powerful, and it's worth not quitting. It's worth keep, keep, you know, it's worth me keeping, keeping going. I don't even know if that makes sense to have, say those two words together, but, you know, it just makes sense th that I would do that. And so, um, I want everything about my life to, to bring him glory. I want my marriage to bring him glory. I want my work to bring him glory. I want my interactions with my friends to bring him glory. I want my relationship with my children to bring him glory. I want the way that I spend my time and spend my money to bring him glory. All of those things, it's always, you know, honor, praise, worship, praise, or, or praise, honor, worship, praise, honor, worship. You know, I want all those things to praise him and honor him and worship him. And, you know, it, 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 it doesn't mean that all of those things are always gonna make me happy because they don't. All those things that I just listed are not gonna be the source of my happiness at all times. They're just not. Um, and, and honestly, that's not my why. Me getting happiness from my marriage or from my kids or from, and it happens for sure. But that's not my why. You know, my why, you know, obviously goes so much deeper than that. My why is to bring glory to God. I don't get all my happiness from my wife. She doesn't get all her happiness from me. We get our happiness as we together in our marriage glorify God with our union, you know? That's honestly what leads to happiness. And it's probably one of the reasons why, you know, Jesus said, 
in Matthew chapter 10 and verse number 39, he said, if you cling to your life, you're going to lose it. You know, and then he says, but if you give up your life for me, you're going to find it. And so I think it's about giving away all the things and all the expectations that we have for all the areas of our life and surrendering it all to accomplish one purpose and one purpose only. And that's to honor and, and praise and glorify and worship the one true God, the God of the universe, because of who he is and because of what he's done. And because that's why he put us on this earth in the first place. I mean, please know this. The whole Bible revolves around glory in God, giving glory to God. I mean, when it comes to creation, first part of the Bible, you know, what's it say in the Psalms? The Bible says, obviously, God created everything. But in the Psalms, it says that the heavens declare his glory. You know, everything we see around us in creation does nothing but scream the fact that there's a God and, and drive us to the point of worshiping, honoring him and praising him for who he is. I mean, that's just what it does. Think about Israel. Go back to Isaiah 43. The reason God made him is so that they would give him glory. Same with you and I. Now think about Jesus. When Jesus was born, the night he was born, angels get together and, and, and basically scream this out. Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace, goodwill toward men. Why? Because it was all about glorifying God. Same thing with the end of the universe, with the end of everything. Right in Revelation chapter five, what's the Bible say at the very end? It says, and then I heard, you know, every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and in the sea. That means every creature, every living thing. The Bible says, this is what they sang. Blessing and honor and glory and power belong to the one sitting on the throne and to the lamb forever and ever. So you know what the Bible is? The Bible is basically a roadmap for our lives and every single road leads to glorifying God. Every single solitary one of them leads to giving God the glory. And I think there's some specific ways to do it. I typically have three points in every message I do. Not, not every message, but this one I do. Um, you know, three ways that we can specifically glorify God with our lives. Bring him the praise and the honor and the worship that he so rightfully deserves. Uh, the first thing is this, just progress brings glory to God. I love the little statement that says, <clears throat> God loves you just the way you are, but he also loves you too much for you to stay that way. You know, that's so absolutely true. Um, Romans chapter four and verse number 20, amazing story. <clears throat> amazing story that takes place. Basically, we're talking about Abraham and Sarah and it talks about the faith of Abraham and how amazing his faith was. It literally says in Romans chapter four and verse number 20, Abraham never wavered in believing God's promise. And I read that and it blows my mind because the crazy thing about it was is where he was at this stage in his life. He was 100, Sarah was 90, and they still believed at their core that God was gonna give them the, the, the child that he had promised. They believed it. And yet, literally the Bible says that in that chapter in Romans that basically Abraham's body was falling apart and Sarah's womb was basically, there's no possible way she was gonna be able to have a child. Uh, but you know what God did? He, filled, he fulfilled his promise and Abraham believed it. But, but what gives me hope in this, because when I, I see faith like Abraham, it just blows me away. This is what I like though. Second part of the verse, it says, in fact, his faith grew stronger. So in other words, <clears throat> his faith wasn't always, you know, what it was in this particular place. There was a time when Abraham's faith was growing. There was a time when he was making progress. And then I don't think it's a coincidence that it connects that phrase with the very next phrase. And it says this, and in this, he brought glory to God. So, <clears throat> you know, God doesn't say, Perfect 100% faith, unfailing, unwavering faith is all that brings glory to me. No, he says a faith that's growing is what brings glory to me. I know you're not where you need to be. I know you're not where you should be right now. I get it. Everybody's making progress. We're all on that road to progress and our faith isn't what it should be. But at least God says a faith that is growing, a faith that is in progress, you know, is something that will bring glory to God. And so... Obviously, when I read that, there's hope for a guy like me uh, because it talks about, you know, the fact that it's just something that's, you know, in progress. So again, none of us are where we ought to be with that. 
uh, but at least we're making some progress. Here's some ways you can grow your faith. We say it all the time at nauseum, but basically every time you read the word of God, your faith is gonna grow. And sometimes you don't see it. It's like watching grass grow. Nobody goes on their back deck to watch their backyard grow. No one does that. But I can guarantee you, you mow it Saturday, you walk out Saturday, the next Saturday, and you're like, what happened? I gotta mow my lawn. You didn't see it, but over time it does grow. And it's the same thing when it comes to your faith. You read God's word and slowly but surely, it's like a building block. Every time you open up God's word, your faith is gonna grow a little bit more and a little bit more. Another thing that, that will help grow your faith is just talking to God with a thankful heart about the things that you need. And I say it all the time, but in my Bible, what I do is I put a prayer list in there and I just, before I read the Bible, or I'm sorry, after I read the Bible, I pull up my prayer list and I just go through all the prayer requests and I talk to God about me and my life and you know, where I am and my relationship with him. And, you know, I have a conversation with him. And honestly, you know, I was looking at my prayer list the other day and I found over 25 entries, over 25 entries on my prayer list that God had answered. That's the cool thing about having a prayer list. You know, you write down your prayer requests and then as they get answered, you write a little date next to the date that God says, boom, I'm gonna answer that prayer request. You know what that does? It grows your faith. Every single time God answers a prayer, your faith grows a little bit more. Um, another thing that you can do too is, and I think this is important, is hang out with other people that have strong faith. And the reason for that is because, you know, somebody said, I don't know who it was, somebody said it. They basically said, you will become the average of the five closest people that you have in your life. Your five closest friends, you'll be an average of who they are. And I thought, wow, that's pretty powerful. Why? Because show me your friends and I'll show you your future. Um, th your friends are gonna have an incredible influence and impact on your life. And so hang out with people that have faith. Why? Because that'll rub off on you. So get in the word, get on your knees and hang out with people that have faith. And I think that over time, what's gonna happen is, is your faith is gonna grow. Proverbs 13 and verse 20 says, walk with the wise and become wise, associate with fools and get in trouble. So, you know, again, your friends have an influence on you. Second thing really fast is this, stay connected to Jesus. You know, stay, every single one of us were made for connections. We were made to have connections. You know, that's why sometimes being isolated is depressing. That's why solitary confinement is a punishment. Why? Because we were made to interact and connect and have relationships. Same is true when it comes to our relationship with Jesus Christ. We were made to connect with him. We were made to you know, interact with him. And so, you know, when I say stay connected to Jesus, you know, to me, obviously you're gonna do that through reading the Bible, praying and, you know, worshiping and all that stuff's gonna stay, keep you connected. But I think it's more of a mindset. I stay connected to Jesus when in my mind, I understand the truth that without Jesus, I can do absolutely nothing. I can literally do nothing without him. And when I understand that mindset, then, you know, I know for a fact that I'm connected to him because I can't exist without him. You know, I remember probably a couple of years back, I was really, really discouraged. I mean, I had hit a, just a low in my life. And um, I remember I was in the bedroom and I just kept saying, you know, out loud, I said, I can't do it anymore. I cannot do it another day is what I kept saying. And um, I'm, I'm convinced that sometimes we convince ourselves of things that aren't true because we keep rehearsing it over and over and over. And I said it over and over. I said, I can't do it anymore. I can't do it anymore. And while I'm saying those words and I'm having my little pity party, my phone beeps. And I remember looking at my phone and it was an email. And I remember clicking on the email and it was verse of the day the verse of the day email. And I was in such a rotten, stinky mood, immature, you know, mood, that I, I looked at the email and I said, you know what, that verse is gonna mean nothing. That's what I said. I'm a pastor and I said that. I said, it's gonna be some verse that means nothing. It's gonna be some verse that I don't even understand. It's gonna be, you know, and the grapes of Eskel were plucked from, you know, it's gonna be something like that. This is what the verse said. The verse said this, I can do all things through Christ that gives me the strength. I can do all things through Christ that gives me strength. 
you know, that grew my faith probably more than anything because literally when I was at a moment and I'm, I'm almost yelling it out, I can't do it anymore. God literally sent me an email that said, you can do all things through Christ that gives you the strength. I'm gonna tell you, the power of the word of God, the grace of my God to be able to give me that at the time when I needed it the most. Not to mention the fact that, you know, um, you know, just the fact that he gave it to me at the exact time. And it was a, it was a response to the exact thing that I was saying. I read that verse, my whole day changed, my whole attitude changed, my whole outlook on life changed. And, um, I felt so connected to the Lord because I felt like he was there for me in real time when I needed him most, you know, and so, it's just things like that, that that help us stay connected to him. So John chapter 15 and verse four, the Bible says, remain in me and I'm gonna remain in you. <clears throat> For a branch cannot produce fruit if it's severed from the vine and you cannot produce fruit unless you remain in me. And so the, the, the cool thing about that is you stay connected to the vine. <clears throat> you have to, by the way, because if you don't, you're not gonna stay alive. You know, there's no possible way you can stay alive. But if you stay connected to the vine, if you stay connected to the Lord, the Bible says, not only will you have life, but you're gonna be fruitful. I mean, you're gonna have amazing fruit in your life. And look at the result of fruitfulness. Same chapter, verse eight, a couple, few verses later. It says, when you produce much fruit, and by the way, staying connected to the vine, it's not a matter of if you're gonna produce fruit, it's when you're gonna produce fruit. You will produce fruit. And it may not be right away. I get it. You know, you plant a fruit tree and sometimes a fruit tree needs a few years before it starts to be able to really produce fruit. It needs to mature. Its roots need to go deeper, you know, but um, you're going to produce fruit. You know, the Bible says, when you produce fruit, you're my true disciples. And then he says this, this brings great glory to my father. So fruitfulness brings great glory to the father. And, <clears throat> you know, that basically ends up being, you know, the stuff that God planned for you to do long before you were even thought of or born, you know, and it also, um, you know, I think refers to the fact that all of the people that God's gonna bring into your life at the most random times that you can ever imagine, you know, somebody's gonna, the people that God brings into your life, it is all by design. I'm not trying to freak you out, it's just, He's wanting you to represent him. You know, he's wanting you to be fruitful with the stuff that he's called you to do before you were born and the people that he brings into your life that you can help and love and serve and, you know, just be a blessing to. All, all I'm saying is, is all of that's fruit. I mean, I think about Priscilla and Aquila. You know, God brought Priscilla and Aquila into the life of Paul when he needed them the most. And it wasn't a coincidence that they all met together. It wasn't a coincidence that they had Jesus in common and tent making in common and all these different things. Why? God brings people into our lives so that we can be fruitful. And every time you're fruitful, it glorifies the Father. It's like praise, it's like honor, it's like worship. And it's just a powerful thing. Um, the last thing is this, purity. And it's the most, it's just, I don't know, it's just a big deal. First Corinthians chapter six, verses 18 through 20. I like, the verse, I like the way verse 18 starts and I like the way verse 20 ends because it's like this complete opposite thing. Verse 18, the Bible uses the words, avoid immorality, avoid it, right? So immorality, it starts off with immorality and it ends with uh, use your bodies for God's glory. Can I just say this? Literally, two things that are completely opposite of each other. Immorality with your, with your body or glorifying God with your body. They're to two totally different opposite things. And, you know, what the Bible is saying here is your body wasn't made to be able to handle sexual immorality. It's not even made for it. Your body was made so that you could glorify the God of the universe. That's what it was made for. But what happens is, is, you know, we, we give into just lusts and we feed lusts and they become stronger and more powerful. And then they begin to just kind of overtake our lives. 
and you know, it becomes an addiction. And of course it never satisfies because you always need more and more and more. And it becomes more and more twisted and it affects your thinking. It affects every area of your life. 24 hours a day, seven days a week, it infects you. That's why Bible, the Bible talks about sexual sin. It's a sin against your own body because your body wasn't made for it and it brings sickness really, mentally, physically, emotionally, in every way, shape and form. And so 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 18 says, avoid immorality, uh, any other sin <clears throat> that a man commits doesn't affect the body, but the man who is guilty of sexual immorality sins against his own body. And then it says in verse 19, it says, don't you know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who lives in you and who is given to you by God? You do not belong to yourselves, but to God. And then it says, he bought you with a price. And then it says, so use your bodies for God's glory. You know, and I just, I just think when you use your body for what it was made for, it leads to happiness. You know, when you use your body for what it wasn't made for, maybe because of lust or addiction or whatever, it just leads to hurt and heartache and pain. And God just warns us over and over again. What I would say is this, this is a personal pet peeve of mine, but, and I think it really is all for all of us. But one of the ways that we can glorify God, one of the ways that we can honor him, praise him and, and worship him is I think to get rid of pornography. I mean, if there's any connection at all in your life, you know, or my life or whatever, obviously, but any connection at all when it comes to pornography, I say just immediately as of right now in the name of Jesus, with the power of the Holy Spirit of God, turn away from it. Even if you don't want to turn away from it, turn away from it. Just do the next right thing and trust God day to day to get through it. That means, you know, pornography that comes via computer or your phone or, um, or, or even, you know, through television shows. And I say television shows. I, I know there's a lot of series out there on Netflix that it's just absolutely filled with pornography, filled with it. It's almost like accept it. It's almost like a thing. It's fine. I hope and pray that, I, you know what I want every, this is what I want, and this is my little thing, but everybody in this church that's connected with our church, I would love it if this was like a no porn zone. And it sounds weird, but I just think that, hey, we're against it. We're against sexual immorality. We're against giving into the lust of the flesh. We're against it. We're not gonna do it. And, and I know that I, I'm tempted. We're all tempted. Everybody's tempted, and it's scary for me to say that. You know, but at the same time, I just want that to be part of the heartbeat of our church. There's so much hurt and pain that is associated with that <clears throat> when it comes to people that are being abused and sex trafficking and, and just everything because people don't care about other people when they want to just satisfy the lust of their flesh, you know, and so cut it off at the source and just say, you know what, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna be involved in pornography at all, starting now, period, with the power of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. You know, I'm backing away from this. I'm getting away from this. I'm cutting off all forms of this. And another thing is, you know, to end all inappropriate relationships. You know, if you're married and you have feelings for someone else, end that relationship. End it immediately, end it. And, and you're gonna think in the back of your mind, but I don't want to be rude. I don't want to be rude to that person. I, I, I hear that in meetings all the time. I'm like, dude, end it. <laughs> be rude, you know, whatever, but end it. And, 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 you know, be all in, be totally committed to the relationship that you have. Again, it's not for your happiness and you're gonna have tons of happiness, but it's to glorify God. You know, and it's the same thing if, you know, I, I say anything um, pre or extra, pre or extra, anything sexual that's pre or extra, or, you know, marital, that is, premarital, extramarital, whatever, you know, just say, it's not gonna happen. I'm not gonna be a part of that. I'm not gonna give in. I don't care what society does. I don't care what the world does. You know, I think about what happens with, you know, children that are aborted. I think about people that are, abused and, and it's just, you know, it's not worth it, you know? And so use your body to glorify him. You know, I think the Bible is clear when it comes to our purpose and it's so incredibly strong. Your why is amazing. So here's what I say, keep going, soldier on. 
today, the next day, however many days God gives you. Some days are gonna be filled with joy, some days are gonna be filled with sorrow. But it doesn't change the fact that in the good times and in the bad times, your life basically was given to you so that you would honor, so that you would worship, and so that you would praise the God of the universe who made you. He's the one that created you, and he made you for that purpose. And I'm telling you right now, if you will fulfill that purpose with your life, you're gonna understand what living's all about. You know, you're gonna understand what true happiness is. I truly believe that. Let's just bow our heads and close our eyes for a minute. You know, if you're, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your savior, the most important decision you'll ever make with your life is Jesus, to, re to receive Jesus, to have a relationship with Jesus. And it starts with faith. You enter into a connection to Jesus and a relationship with Jesus by believing in him. You say, what do I believe? Well, I, you believe that he's God in the flesh, that he came to this earth 2,000 years ago and that he came to die on a cross. He came for the purpose of dying, you know, and I believe you can see that in, in obviously in the scriptures, but he was a sacrifice. There's a reason why he was introduced as the Lamb of God, which takes away the sins of the earth. That's how he was introduced, for goodness sake. John the Baptist introduced him that way. I mean, he was going to die as a sacrificial lamb. And that's exactly what he did. And, but then he rose from the dead. And so if you will believe that and accept Jesus Christ, you know what you'll become? You'll become a Christian, okay? And it's an awesome thing. And so um, I would like to just, you know, I always say, you know, if, if you wanna believe in Jesus, then tell him. And sometimes people don't know what to say. What, is, what do they say? Dear, I believe in Jesus. That's great too. You can just do that. But I can also lead you in a prayer right now. Why don't you pray something like this? If you want to accept Christ, if you want to be a Christian, if you want Christ in your life, why don't you pray this? Dear Heavenly Father, I want you to know that I'm, I believe that I, I believe that you sent your son Jesus. You know, I believe that he died on the cross. I believe that three days later he rose from the dead. I believe it, you know, it hasn't been proven to me, but I choose to believe it by faith. I pray that you would forgive me of my sin. I pray that you would, would just be my savior. I just give you my life and I believe in you and trust in you, in Jesus' name, amen. Listen, if you prayed that prayer, you know, congratulations. It's, it's just, you giving your heart to Christ is everything. We'd love to know about it. If you would like to tell us, all you have to do is grab your phone and text the words Park Valley to 97000. That's 97,000. Um, if you, by any means or whatever, have a prayer request or something that's heavy on your heart and you want us to know about it so that we can pray with you and for you, then just text the words prayer praise to 97000 and we'll get your prayer request, and I promise you, we'll be praying for your prayer request um, as you, you know, uh, give them in to us. Guys, I wanna thank you so much for being a part of the service, and uh, don't forget that your why is so, so powerful. Hope you have a great weekend.